This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. From time to time, we're going to catch up with the people who have shared their story on the show. When we last caught up with Matt Moran, Aria was closed and his brigade of head chefs were churning out Chizzy at home meals. That was a few months ago and now he's on the verge of reopening Aria. Matt, how are you feeling about that? Uh, mate, I have to say um, I'm, a, I'm a little bit nervous, probably more nervous now than what I was probably when I made that decision about three weeks ago and uh, and have a date. And, and the reason being is what's just recently happened in, in Melbourne um, is making, I think, everyone nervous with what's going to happen and and uh, whether it's actually going to make its way into Sydney and whether we uh, we close down again. You know, it was very, very hard to, to close down the first time. Um, it's been a very expensive exercise to to uh, have it reopen, but then to have to close down again and, and then at some stage reopen again, it's, it's going to be absolutely devastating. You know, I just really feel for the guys in Melbourne and, and what they're going through at the moment because, God, it, uh, it, must be, it must be really hard for them to – and they've only been open really a couple of weeks um, and they're very limited and then bang, um, it must, must be heartbreaking for them. Have you heard any uh, indication from consumers in Sydney that um, they've been affected watching what's happening in Melbourne or do you feel that, you know, all the bookings looking good to, uh, for opening? Yeah, look, look and, and that's, uh, that's, uh, that's a little concern too. Like, you know, we've got North Bondi now and, and Chiswick open, which are, are, are quite busy. Um, you know, we're pretty much maximum of what we can do um, all the time, which is, which is great. But you know the the big issue is is going to be, um, you know, if it does come here and, and people start getting uh, nervous and, and worried about it and they they, they start cancelling and that's exactly what we saw last time um, in Sydney when it first started, you know it uh, it's you know we we saw the bookings go first before anything else. What's it been like uh, having all of the team there and particularly front of house that you know were probably less involved with the take home models. Um, the build-up to opening, what's it been like? Oh, look, and there's been plenty of other chefs too that, that weren't part of that, you know, because they're, they're, you know, ARIA staff, there were a couple of head guys that sort of came over to help out in the beginning. Um, look, they're really excited, you know. It's, uh, you know, we've had a couple of meetings already, team meetings, and, and um, you know, I've, I've seen a lot of the staff already and, and they're just excited to get back into the kitchens. Um, you know, they're, they're itching to get back in. It'll, it's, it's like... Uh, it's like we've had the off season and, and now we're starting up the brand new season again. So, you know, they're, they're excited by it and they're excited to be back in work. Um, you know, I'm not sure whether they're actually contemplating what might happen if, if it, uh, you know, if the virus does come back into, into Sydney and we, we are restricted again, but yeah, it'll be absolutely devastating. When we spoke earlier in the year, you were about as raw and real and open as I've ever experienced of you. <laughs> um, and which humbling, <laughs> which was a quite um, um, an amazing uh, experience, and a lot of our, listen, our listeners also noted sort of getting to getting. They felt like they were getting to know Matt Moran even more. Has this experience changed you? Uh, look, uh, I think it has. You know, in in a certain way. Um, you know, I, I think it's. I've probably been going down that line for a, for a while though. You know, you asked me five years ago, and I think I said this. You know. I'd, I'd love, love to have, you know, 50 restaurants, but now, you know, it's all about, you know, ones that are successful, ones that make money and, and, um, and you know, enough is enough in life. Um, you know, I think this time's given me a lot of time to really think about, um, you know, you know, I, I had a milestone last year, um, you know, turning 50 and it's like, you know, what, what more do you want and, and where do you want to be in 10 years, 20 years and, and 30 years? Um, and, you know, I suppose diversifying a little bit, you know, I've been thinking more about stuff that I can do on the farm and you know, little eco cabins and things like that. And, and, uh, of course I'm never going to give up the, 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 industry that I love the most. Um, but you know, if you ask me if I want 20 restaurants, you know, in three years time, I'd, I'd say the ambition's not there at the moment. The ambition there is to make the ones that I've got, um, you know, work and, and put everyone back into into jobs and 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 stabilize and um, and consolidate. And I think consolidation is is probably the, the biggest thing for us now for the next couple of years. You know, we've lost we've lost a lot. So a lot of, a lot of that is to try and make it make it back and make it back up. 
but you know that could be years. Do you think we're going to see a lot of that across the board, like less sort of big restaurant groups and um, more focus on the, the ones that they already have and just making them even better? Yeah, I, I think so. And, you know, it, it's it's a hard one, Hux, um, because, you know, it, it's it's like, you know, there will be lots of opportunities for people, you know, and, you know, you kind of think, right, well, the big guys might take up those opportunities. Um and, you know, a lot of people will be gun shy. I know I am. <laughs> you know, even even already, you know, people have people have already been, you know, suggesting things and asking me to do different things. And you know, there's been some things in the pipe work that I probably might still do, but you know, I'm very gun shy at the moment about opening, you know, or spending lots of money on on uh, on new venues, that's for sure. Because you just don't know what's gonna happen. You've been doing all sorts of really interesting things and, um, you know, like your cooking series. And um, is, is that going to continue moving forward? Yeah, it will. You know, I, I found a little little niche for myself is where, you know, I started doing – I did a, a Zoom the other day for a company for 400 people. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've done about – I've done over a dozen of them now. Um, and I started doing some work with Harris Farm. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm concentrating on opening Arian at the moment. That's why I haven't been – doing the last few Fridays. But, um, you know, I'd, I'd like to do something like that, you know, maybe every two or three months and have like a, a theme around it and, you know, have some wine guys in there maybe or some, you know, certain suppliers or whatever and and, uh, and sort of interview them or even a YouTube um, series maybe with some some friends and and uh, and do more of that. I, I really enjoyed that. And I, I actually, I suppose when I built my house 11 years ago, I, I built it to film in. And I never used it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now it's, it's kind of set up perfectly, you know, with that big island bench and, and the stove there. So you're looking straight at it. So maybe maybe I'll get some use out of it yet. But, yeah, look, I, I've been having fun doing stuff like that. You know, I've got um, – I'm cooking for uh, for a guy um, coming up soon um, for his engagement party. But he, he's asking her to, to marry him on the day and then coming back to his house and I'm, the, I'm there cooking – cooking lunch for him <laughs> so there's been some really odd things that I'd, I'd probably never do before but um you know it's uh it's, it's been fun and I, I think that's that's something that I've, I've really you know I've let my barrier down a little bit I went for a motorbike ride on a weekend two weekends ago and um and it, that's not it, you might think it sounds strange but it, uh, not strange but it was a little bit because the guy that asked me to go on the bike ride it was him and four of his mates never met the four guys before in my life and he's been asking me for five years to go on a ride and i look back and I, I saw that it was you know it's been going on for five years and i keep saying you're not giving me enough notice i can't do it i can't do it and he, he sent me a message on the wednesday wednesday night and says do you want to come for a ride and i, I wrote back and i said yeah i'll come with you and it was just like really with a question mark <laughs> um, and the strange thing was, I haven't seen him for for thirty five years. I went to school with him, and um, wow! And it was just like you know, I had the I had the nicest weekend with the nicest blokes, and you know, I was the outsider. And um, you know, we got to a local pub in Walker, and uh, it was quite funny actually because when I made the booking, um, you know, because I was separate to them because they were already booked. The lady said to me, she said, oh, will you be having dinner with us? Because, you know, they wanted to know the numbers at the pub. And I said, yes, I will be. And uh, and I said, would you like a credit card? She goes, no, it's all right. And I said, well, I'll give you my name. I'll spell it for you. I says, Matt, M-A-T-T, Moran, M-R-A-N. She goes, oh, you spell it exactly the same as that celebrity chef. <laughs> <laughs> and I go, yeah, I, I actually do. <laughs> I'll see you for dinner on Saturday night. <laughs> um, but, you know, it was, it, was a, it was a great ride, but it was also just a really – you know, great thing to do. And it's normally, I, I don't know, I probably wouldn't have done that. So I've sort of letting my guard down everywhere, um, you know. That's amazing. I, I've seen I've seen a lot of good in this in this uh, COVID-19. I've seen a lot of bad and, and I want to be hopefully remembered for the, the good bits. Just before you mentioned about filming in the kitchen that's um, pretty much set up for that. And I remember um, that your daughter was doing the filming. Has she arranged a new uh, seven-figure deal for filming moving forward? <laughs> Mate, uh, you know what? She's she's been fantastic, and she's done quite a bit of it. And you know, the great thing that I've noticed with with Amelia doing it is, you know, she's zooming in and zooming out, and, and really getting a, a feel for it. And it really dawned on me that she's actually 
enjoying the, the, the content and she's learning. And, you know, she'd be asking me later more about what I was doing and how I did it. Um, and, yeah, that, that's, that's a nice little thing between father and daughter. Uh, she hasn't got a seven-figure deal either. <laughs> <laughs> you are opening uh, Tuesday uh, with Aria. Um, you know, and I know that the, you are a bit nervous and, mm. you know, what's going on in Melbourne, but how are you going to celebrate on the night? Mate, I'm, um, I'm going to head into the kitchen with Joel and uh, being the first night. And I've told Joel that, uh, you know, Joel being the head chef that I, I want to hang out for a while and just get in uniform and just, you know, and spend a bit of time with the, with the crew. We're only opening um, Tuesday to Saturday nights. So, you know, normally Ari would be seven lunches, seven dinners. But, you know, it's a very, very streamlined, um, uh, you know, offering. And it's it's kind of um, it's kind of bizarre, Hux, because it's kind of pushed us more into into fine dining more than what we were because we don't have that pre-theatre and that supper and that, that lunch or the function facilities you know, it's really, you know, it's really about the customer and we want to concentrate on that and, and give them, a, 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 you know, a fantastic experience that they probably haven't had for, for, for many, many months. So, you know, and I want to hang around and, and, and just help out where I can and, and, um, and be part of that. So I don't know whether I'll be celebrating. You know, I don't normally drink during the week. So, you know, maybe on the Saturday night I might, might go nuts, might go to the pub if I can get in <laughs> <laughs> with the team. Well, Matt, you're always good for a yarn. Um, good luck, not that you need it, Tuesday night. And um, really appreciate catching up again and hopefully uh, see you in person soon. Absolute, absolute pleasure. Cheers, buddy. This is the Deep in the Weeds podcast. I'm Anthony Huckstep. Stay tuned as we share the stories of Australia's hospo community, suppliers and producers in search of hope during this pandemic. Special thanks to executive producer Rob Locke for making this all happen. Follow us on Instagram at Deep in the Weeds Podcast or email us at podcast at deepintheweeds.com.au. Stay safe and be well.